the first section is a conversation, um, basically just to introduce ourselves and figure out what we're doing here together. Um, uh, so I have some prompts. Uh, I maybe go around the room um, and say your name, uh, what team you're on, whether that is a team in a larger organization or if you're in a small organization, the whole organization, maybe what something... You don't have to explain what you do, but maybe something short if, you, if, if folks, uh, uh, if you want to. Um, if you are working directly with uh, IPFS in some fashion, maybe how are you moving data around on IPFS or other networks today? Um, what would you, how would you like to be moving data around? What are your pain points, right? Um, and then finally, what brought you to this session? Like, what, what are you hoping to get out of it? And what, uh, what do you want to learn? And you have, I think we'll, we'll do like a minute 30 for each person. Um, I'm not going to put a whole timer up there, but like, if you're going ridiculously long, maybe I'll start making faces at you. Cool. All right. Everyone ready to, uh, anyone want to get started? I mean, I can just start with, are you okay to start? Here, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. No, you did not know. This is not a landmark forum. I'm Ben, um, or Ben Go. I joined Gil three or four months ago on the DAG house team, which makes like web free storage, NFT storage, and all this like IPFS. And I'm just getting to the point where I'm starting to have clips of classic IPFS and try to be useful. Uh, I think the way that it moves data around is via BitSwap as implemented on AWS Lambda and like AWS services. Uh, I don't know how I'd like to go to new. Yeah, I think graph uh, sync looks cool. Um, honestly, what I hope to get out is I'm killing time before the like real privacy tracks. <laughs> so I want to see what <laughs> We're happy to be your, your backup plan. Hi, yeah, I'm uh, Daniel. I also joined recently two months ago about um, as a developer advocate for IPFS. And uh, I am working on the outer core team. Um, how am I moving? So I'm moving data today mostly with BitSwap and uh, HTTP. I built a really lightweight implementation of uh, IPFS. And uh, uh, actually, what I'm really hoping to get out of this is to understand more of the trade-offs in like graph sync and versus BitSwap. What are sort of the different considerations there? Um, because I don't know too much about graph sync. Hi, I'm Alan. I work on the DAG house team. I'm moving data around in car files over HTTP mostly, but also over BitSwap, over WebSockets. Uh, I would like to move data around faster than it is at the moment. Uh, and I'd like to get an understanding of how GraphSync works as well. Cool. Um, I'm Stephen. I'm on the FBM team, I'm on the FBM promoting. Um, I, uh, right now, I'm moving data around logging on Filecoin. Uh, I guess I'm working on the VM, so I'm not really moving data around. I'm just magically replicating the data that you have on right. my end. Um, I'm not regenerating it, uh, but I, I do use it in my book, which means use this all. Yes. Um, you could simply say I wrote the thing that most of you are using to, to move data around, or part of the thing. Right, you did. Responsibility for that. You're a part of it. I'm part of it. You worked on it for a second. Okay. This is the Spider Man moment. But yeah, so what I want to get this morning is to explain all the problems with BitSwap and all things, like basically where we want to take it and all things we have learned um, and how we can make it like, work better. Uh, because like right now, it's kind of like it has literally been worked on by like four or five people over time um, who like. They we can start like changing their standing process to work over time. So it it's kind of smashes up different ideas. Like we kind of now I think have a very good direction to take it, but we just need to do that. Cool. I'm Steve with Infura. Um, I'm I've been here two weeks, so I guess I've worked on bit swap a little bit. I'm not really sure I've moved any data around. Um, and given just answered, I think what I want to learn this morning is what the problems with BitSwap are. Nice. Uh, I'm Michel, uh, in Fiora as well. Uh, so, yeah, cleaning the service, the way uh, stuff. So, we are moving around data in uh, different ways. So, uh, 
uh, Gitway uh, and subsequently HTTP API, um, just beside it as well. So, uh, and also we're going to like internally sometimes because we have to do data migration and stuff. So sometimes it's down to the like, data store level that we access and we um, Yeah, uh, Cool. So I'm a person. I work at Consensus Lab at Theo. Uh, we are moving data in a horrible way because we just use Liquid to be in Gossip Shop to broadcast like, as part of the layer. And uh, yeah, we want to understand to what extent we can use this software. Um, but we want to understand if we can use this software. There are some restrictions. Um, we want to understand if we can have extensions or something that will overcome those limitations. Nice. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm on the Ethereum team. Um, we're today, well, what we're doing is we're looking at between our browsers and our server nodes, uh, and that is all our web sockets and that's what. Uh, we would like to move it around a little bit faster. We have a latency problem there, uh, like very deep bags. Um, so I'm very interested in grasping, hearing about that. Um, and yeah, I, I'm interested to see like different approaches. Cool. Uh, I'm James, also from the Bitcoin team. Uh, more or less what uh, Philip said, but yeah, specifically focusing on how to efficiently and reliably move data uh, from client to like uh, soon. Hi, I'm Laura. I just joined PLP weeks ago. And I really want to learn about security of the small graphs so you can figure out how you prioritize developing um, uh, I'm Gus. I'm, I work on the IPFS steward, mostly on Google. Um, a lot of what I'm going to get out of this is figuring out what other people want to so try to find the power of the people. Um, I also spent, like, when I first joined PL a year ago, my first project was uh, figuring out why FitSwap wasn't working operationally very well. Just now starting a project to sort of rewrite, rewrite the bill implementation. Uh, so I want to understand a lot of the historical context behind the current implementation. And the uh, you... intros. Yes, intros. You have prompts. Okay. Uh, your name, team, how you move data today, what are why would you what would you like to be doing, or what are your pain points? And what do you want to get out of this morning? If you don't move data, you can just answer the last one. Cool. Yes, I'm, I'm Steve Lefty, uh, one of the engineering managers at Protocol Application, which is folks like uh, Jesse Dean and Lido and some others here. And uh, I'm just interested to learn more of the history and context. And again, it's similar to you guys want to be able to figure out how to best support the community and these efforts to be able to Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Lido. I'm on the same team at the stewards. Right now, I'm moving data around with we swap on an HTTP, uh, and mostly in that I need to trust some HTTP endpoint. How would I like to move it around with smarter bit swap like protocol? And also, like with the HTTP, I don't need to trust. And ideally, they would be just regular protocols, the HTTP ones. Uh, and what I hope to get out, uh, <laughs> what I hope to get from this morning is one, uh, understand why graphing is great. And then uh, understand how can you like make HTTP just another protocol. Nice, um, awesome. Well, uh, I'm Hannah. I am currently on the Bedrock team. I have moved a lot. I've moved a lot of data around with both BitSwap and GraphSync, and worked on both libraries um, a little bit. Um, and uh, I'm really glad you're here to. My talk is also about how GraphSync has a million problems, so it's going to be like problems from uh, from Stephen about BitSwap and then problems from me with GraphSync. Um, uh, but uh, what I hope to get out of this, um, I would like folks. Here's here's what I want. I want I I would love for folks to come out of today with some shared understanding of the problems, right? Like so that we can at least have 
a way of thinking about moving forward. You're actually going to hear about more than just bit swap and grass sync this morning if you are here for the whole thing. Um, but uh, but something that I've noticed in working on, I guess, really only two of the protocols is that there's some common questions that come up and some common ideas. And I, I'm going to spend like 10 minutes before uh, Stephen's talk uh just sort of like identifying what I think I know, which are like cross-cutting concerns that you will encounter no matter what protocol you are going to use. Um, so I'm gonna, this is gonna be like very short intro to the whole track. Um, so uh, I'm gonna, there, these are, I think there's like five of these um, and, and um, I'll just go through them. Um, yeah, key concepts. Uh, all right, so this is a concept called incremental verifiability. Um, to me, this is like the baseline to call yourself a protocol labs protocol. Um, and uh, it, it sh or it should be. <laughs> um, uh, essentially, like we're moving around content address data. You should generally uh, you should generally be not care who you're getting it from because the content address data should be self-verifying. And we should fetch it in a way like we don't have to verify every piece of data we get byte for byte. Um, we can hold some untrusted data for some amount of time, but like you shouldn't have to download 100 gigabytes before you figure out if you've got the right thing. Um, and this would be like, like if we're going to use HTTP as a protocol, I would love it if like to what you were saying, like you could do it in such a way that you're not just waiting until the very end to figure out if you got the right thing. Um, so that's, that's a concept called incremental verifiability. Um, and it's, I, like you'll notice that most of the protocols have to think about this. Like, how are we going to do it? Given what we're planning to do, how are we going to accomplish this? Um, another concept I want to, like, this is a word that I use a lot and I don't think anyone else uses, but which is, like, I call it query planning, which is you're most likely trying to get a large piece of data, possibly a whole DAG, possibly a part of a DAG, and possibly you want to get it from one or more people and maybe over one or more protocols. How are you going to break it up? How are you, who are you going to ask? And when, you know, what are you going to ask for? How are you going to assemble it all back together and verify it? Um, this is, this is probably some, the most, in my experience, the library that does this, that does this, the most advanced version in this ecosystem is the BitSwap sessions, right? It's like figuring out which peers have this thing. And then it's like making decisions about who to ask so that you can kind of split it up among multiple people. Very few of our protocols do this, but it's a really important question. Um, and there's a lot of solutions. Like you're gonna hear about like some, there's a section on uh, this sort of idea of manifests, which might be a really useful way to think, to be able to split up queries among multiple peers. Um, but there's a lot of things you, a lot of different approaches you might try. Like you might wanna move, like if you're getting a large Unix FS file, it might make sense to only ask one person via a graph sync query for the entire like superstructure of Unix FS file down to the blocks. This is assuming we don't solve the block limit problem. Um, but, uh, and then go to BitSwap for all of the raw blocks at the bottom, which is where the large bits of data live. So that's just an example of, of a way you could plan a query. Um, Shared data model. So this is, I think one of the most interesting concepts when you think about a transport protocol is what do both sides both have to understand about the data to move it? Um, BitSwap is, is probably the one that, that has the most straightforward thing though, possibly sending HTTP cars is even simpler because you don't even know their cars until the very end. Um, but like, if you're just sending blocks, all you have to know about is that you have you have uh, bytes that hash to SIDs. When you move into protocols like GraphSync or any of their, uh, or uh, any protocol that ab operates above the block layer, you're asking both sides to understand the data at a higher level. Um, and and uh, if you came to the data model, uh, data models track yesterday, um, something that came up a lot is that we don't all agree on how we should understand data above the block level, right? So there's an interesting question here, uh, like both, like how, what do you both have to understand about the data? And like, how do you maybe signal to each other things about the data so that they can, so that the other party can understand? Like there's this, there's a super advanced, you know, plan somewhere in the protocol labs caves to like send WASM blocks around that help you understand new IPLD data structures. 
Like, that's pretty wild to me. I don't know. Like, but <laughs> that sounds like a lot. But like, I'm just saying you can take this really far. Right. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. I don't know what the last word on that slide is. I finished this very soon recently. Um, <laughs> how? 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 Um, uh, okay. Uh, this, I'm just calling this, I have this category called server concerns, right? Which is like, if you're writing a protocol, you need to think about how you're going to like handle server load. Um, most of our protocols do this. Like, how do you get like, how do you prevent getting DDoS? How do you minimize your resource consumption? And then the flip side of that is how do you make sure data is moving over the wire constantly and not you're not just leaving connections idle and how are you saturating connections? Um, and then, is this the last one? Oh yeah, no, no. Um, uh, and then the last one I have is like, I'm vaguely calling this error recovery. It's not really a category, but there are some common things that come up a lot, um, which are like, Things that happen that go wrong, uh, drop connections, right? Uh, errors sending on the pipe. Uh, that is not, you'd be surprised how, how annoying it is to deal with that. Uh, and that is a reality, just if you're writing a new protocol, on, particularly if it's on libp2p, you should be, for the time being, <laughs> aware that your connection might drop and have a plan to recover. Um, missing or partial data, Right, like a lot of a lot, we have these big dads, a lot of people do not have all of them. Um, how are you dealing with that? There's, there are some problems around like race conditions and data consistency. We have a little bit of an easier time with this because um, we are dealing with content addressed immutable data. So you kind of have a very good indicator if you're out of date on data, but there's still stuff like, okay, I requested a, a block and now I already got it from someone else. Do I want to try to cancel it? Do I want to, you know, is this want old? How do I not like get backed up with old wants? Uh, this comes up in BitSwap sometimes. Um, so yeah, those are like broad categories that I've noticed come up across protocols. Um, and I think it's useful to have like some conceptual shared language to, to help us talk through like what are different alternatives. So that's all I got. Um, and uh, that's the end of the intro. Uh, and now we're going to hear from Stephen about BitSwap. Oh, by the way, after Stephen, I'm going to talk about GrassSync. And then we have more presentations. We have a presentation about car syncing, I believe. Yes? Hopefully. Hopefully. The, hopefully. Yes? Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, talking about a little bit about this pattern of manifests. And then uh, finally, we have an open discussion. Because that's the easiest way to have a smooth session is to let people debate. Um, cool. That's all I got. Ooh, <laughs>